How many of y'all prepare to come to church? What, what is your process and your preparation when you come to church? Do you pray and get your mind stayed on God and, you know, just start praying mentally of, you know, you, you have a lot of things that come at you during the week and, you know, things come in to attack us, to hinder our praise. But see, what you have to do is learn how to press past it because that's all the enemy wants to do is stifle your praise. He doesn't want us to come in here as a collective people and draw strength from one another. He wants us to go out and come, come in the same way. He doesn't mind. And sometimes you have to forget who's to your left and who's to your right. You know, you have to learn how to just really come in and say, God, I'm going for what I know. Because I know what you've done for me. And you've been so good to me that I'm going to give you praise in spite of myself. Because sometimes I'm just jacked. But God is still faithful. I'm not obedient sometimes, but God is still faithful. He doesn't cut me off. I operate sometimes with God based on how I feel. And you should never operate with God based on how you feel. Because what we do is not about a feeling. It's about what we believe. Some of y'all glorify God more on Facebook than you do when you come to church. That's a problem. Because when you're really hanging out with God, when you come in this atmosphere, this is where the Spirit of the Lord is. And the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it comes to tell us that whom the sun set free is free indeed. And you sit like you got chains on you. You, 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 you sit like you bound, you know. You don't have to qualify to praise, you just have to praise. There's no qualification you need to meet because if that was the case, none of us could praise. We lift up holy hands by faith. We give God the fruit of our lips because we love him. When I get in here, it has nothing to do with pastor. It has nothing to do with my children. It's, this is me and God's time. So I'm going to give them a vertical praise and hope you praise them to my left and to my right. But if you don't, I'm going to praise them anyway. But sometimes, sometimes you just wish you had somebody that would praise God with you. And if they didn't have a reason to praise God, they would realize you are reason enough to praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I come to glorify God because he's been good to us. And I think sometimes we really don't understand in spite of ourselves, God has been good to us. You know your secrets. You know when God got you out of that and you was boxed in and didn't know how you were going to escape. You know what God did for your babies. You know what I'm saying? For your children who back was against the wall and the enemy was trying to take them out. For that you owe God praise. Hallelujah. I don't understand. We drive good cars. We live in good houses. We eat what we want to eat. We dress like we want to dress. We buy what we want to buy. And then we come in here. We act like somebody told us we had to come. Help me. Help me. Help me. Hallelujah. And then you say you're a lover of God. Well, I like to have love expressed. Oh, bless him. Express your love to me. Hallelujah. If you love me, then you express it. You get, in, you, get, uh, you get to know me well enough that you know how to express love to me. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm not in no hurry. There ain't no food at the house for me to cook. It's some there, but it ain't cooked. So pastor going to have to feed me today. I'm tired of rushing in and rushing out. And there is no change. There are hurting, struggling, mentally challenged folks in the midst of us. And we come in and we go out. Same old flavor. Every now and then you got to switch it up. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to sit in a different place. I'm not sitting by you because you ain't got no praise. I'm going to sit by somebody that knows how to lift God up in spite of their circumstance and their situation. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. We had a good time last night, but it was all about having fun. This is all about Jesus. Now, what's the difference? Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. 
Hallelujah. My God deserves a better praise. Hallelujah. He deserves a better praise. Hallelujah. He deserves a better praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Of the praise. We owe him praise. Because if it not, had not been for the Lord, nobody would be in this room this morning. Oh, bless him. Oh, bless him. Oh, bless him. Hallelujah. I'm going to act like pastor's not here. Hallelujah. He is the lover of my soul. Y'all may be seated. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, what y'all don't understand is that things happen to us all. And what I learned the last couple of weeks is God allows things to happen to show us where we're at. And the problem I figured out, you know, as I was talking to the Lord, I figured out we got a problem with love in the church. Because what I found out is we love those that love us. We love those that we like. They, they give me something, so I give them something. I found out that my love was conditional. I found out that I didn't know. I thought really that I would really love people, regardless of where they came from or what they have done. I just was really convinced that I love folks. And I was talking to my son last night. He said, one thing about you and daddy, y'all love church. And I was like, we love church. Well, I don't know if I love church that much. I said, you might be absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I told him he might be absolutely right. But it's not so much that I love church as I love God. Yeah. And I believe this is what God called and purposed me to do before the foundation of the world. And then he's been so good to me, in spite of me, until I cannot do anything but serve him with a passion. So when I get with other believers that tell me they love God, and there's no fire, you know, like if I was standing up here today giving out $100 bills, Y'all will be turning this bad boy out. You don't got to do nothing for it. I'm just going to give it to you. But you have your whole destiny being handed to you. You got health being handed to you. You got finances being handed to you. You got protection, provision. You act like you can't relate. Like you don't even understand why you are in the room. We got gifts that lay dormant. But I found out it's because it's a lack of love. I, I tell on myself a lot, so I'm telling on myself today. And the Lord has released me to be able to tell this. And uh, it's a little embarrassing. Because I really think most of the time I have arrived. In God, I believe, you know, God walks with me and he talks with me. And I love that man right there. Just a whole bunch. I really love him. But for three days, I didn't talk to him. Yeah, we're human. We had a disagreement. So I am not immature enough to cuss like some of y'all do and call each other names you know, and scream. Mm -hmm. I just said, I'm going to be quiet until he understands my position. All right. For those three days, I didn't sleep good Amen. at all because I was trying to make sure his foot did not touch mine. I, I, I wanted him to understand that I felt like I was right. I, I needed him to know that, you know, you, 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 mm -mm, you shouldn't have did that. 
You shouldn't have did that. Now, the way I'm acting, y'all think he left with another woman. He didn't. So, I, I mean, I cut up silently. But we can act a fool as women and be so silent. You know, we can be so quiet, you know. You don't get no food, you know, but I ain't saying nothing. You know, I'm just going to be quiet. So for three days, I, I, didn't, I didn't say anything to him. And I was talking to God, and I didn't want to hear God. Mm-mm, I didn't know God, uh-uh. No, it shouldn't have went down like that. It should not have went down like that. I, I'm not, mm-mm, God, mm-mm. Now, I had forgot about giving up your right for righteousness. You know, I forgot about love without dissimulation. I forgot shedding it abroad, you know. I forgot about all that, you know. I, I forgot about the whole, um, get my scripture for me, Jamil. Amen. Whoever's up there. Amen. I'm going to talk to y'all just for a little while because we be jacked. And that's why we can't praise. Because we, we don't have the love game down. And I know Tina Turner said, what love, what, what's love got to do with it? Well, in this house, everything. Everything. Because if you usher on the door and you do it without love, it means absolutely nothing. If I can serve my children, my sisters and brothers, the members of this church, and I can't go serve that homeless man with the love of God, that is a problem. And the problem is, instead of giving love, all of us are so hungry for love. Until we don't know what we need, we're supposed to give it away. We're always sitting around deciding who's loving me and who's not loving me. Well, God began to talk to me about this scripture. 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 13. I'm going to read them all because y'all don't read that much. So I'm not imposing on your time. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and it is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up, doeth not behave unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. That's what love is. Yes. And we fail to exercise love in the body of Christ. Jamel, I am so glad to see you today. I miss you. We count each other out, and God never counts us out. Go ahead, y'all waiting for me to tell on myself. I'm telling. We had a situation and pastor made a decision to do something that I was not in agreement with. But I wasn't in agreement with because I was walking in self-righteousness and I was being judgmental. And I wanted him to shed up his bowels of compassion and do what I wanted him to do. But being the man of God, he said, girl, you just going to have to be mad. And get over yourself because I'm getting ready to do this. And he struggled because he loves me. But he did it because he loves God. And sometimes you got to do what you do because you love God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So for three days, booby, I could have died in those three days. He could have died in those three days. But for three days, God's grace was sufficient. So y'all say, what are you talking about? Well, I could have left here and not been able to praise God for being long-suffering towards me. When you judge a person and you count them out, God can't use you. He cannot use you to minister to the lost, to the hopeless. 
to be addicted. He can't use you because you're already looking down on them, counting them out. We cannot count people out. Most of us in here, the problem with your praise is you don't love yourself. And if you ain't loving you, you can't love God and you can't love nobody else. Most of us have low self-esteem and struggle and waiting for somebody else outside of us to validate us. It don't work like that. It's a God thing. What you searching for is in you. You have to draw from the well of salvation. How do I draw? With joy. You draw with joy. Many of us have problems. And you, I see us run to and fro and pass. and We never stop to engage God. We are engaging everybody else but God. And then you think you're qualified to do a work for the Lord? Oh, my God. I thought I loved everybody. I do. As long as you don't call, cross my boundaries. I love you as long as you don't touch my stuff. I love you as long as you stay in your place. That is not the love of God. I've been married to Pastor 37 years. You know why? Because agape is under affectionate. When agape is under affectionate love, it supports. It's the very foundation. Agape keeps me from violating affectionate love. Your hips are going to change sides. You're going to gain a few pounds. His stomach is going to get a little bit bigger. Help me, Holy Ghost. But when there is a godly love, it is not based on the superficial. It is based on the love of God. That's why we can discard people so easily because we don't have a real invested God love interest. That's why you can talk to your wife any kind of way because you don't acknowledge God when you're in her presence. God is a silent listener to every conversation. He's the uninvited guest at every dinner table. God is always present. Money ain't your problem. God got all the money. Money is not your problem. Your problem is it's a love thing. And if still you start loving, then you'll never have the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is your problem. Y'all think money, clothes, and cars do it? You got that? You ain't in the field picking cotton no more. You can go in the house and flush your own toilet. You ain't picking beans. You can go get them out the store. But y'all still ain't happy. He fed a manna. They wanted me. He said quail. They still wasn't happy. Don't you know it's not stuff? He can give you all the money you can spend. You still will not be whole. We allow the enemy to divide relationships and families over stuff. Won't speak to each other over stuff. Parents counting children out over stuff. I have to love you regardless of how I feel about you. I've been commanded to love because I've received the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave. Many of us look at each other and say, they don't need nothing, I ain't giving nothing. You don't know what I need. I don't know what the person sitting next to me needs. I just just look beside him and God said, do this. It's it's the absence of, y'all leave here and talk about each other. Put my scripture back up here. Can I talk just, I didn't cry and and shame, I'm good. Listen, look at this right here. Doeth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not. I wonder why he named love her. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no. That's what love does. 
That's what the love of God does. As long as we sit in here and worship, and it is absence from the love of God, you will never fill the house. You will never. When I got saved in Ansbach, Germany, and I used to go to church smelling like smoke, those folks loved me. They called to see about me. Do you understand? I wasn't no tithe payer yet. I wasn't giving much offering yet. They loved me where I was until God got me where I needed to be. We have people that, oh, they ain't doing what I want them to do. Forget them. I ain't having nothing to do with them. That is not the love of God. The love of God keeps reaching. The love of God, I get tired. My love runs out. But the love of God, it keep compelling. It keep calling. It keep texting. It keep leaving voicemail. It keeps sending email. Thinking about your girl. Ain't seen your girl. Where you at, girl? Love you. You got any food? You need gas? Love causes you to do something. Love is self-sacrificing. It will take the, my mama used to say, sometimes you got to take the low side. What you mean, mama? Sometimes I got to step back and let it be what it be so God can be glorified. But most of us, we stay in a defensive position more than an offensive. Don't you know if you stay in a defense, you don't never put no points on the board? You got to try something different. You got to look at your life and measure it up. Lord, do I really operate in the love of God? Do I really operate in your agape love? Yeah. Or is it just all about me? Some of y'all, it's all about you. Yeah. It can't always be all about you. He put us here to be a conduit that he can flow through and love the loveless through us. But when we set standards, make boundaries and rules, yeah. I ain't going to love you if you don't treat me like this. I ain't going to love you if you don't do this for me. I love her because she's my partner. But what about the one that want to be your partner and you don't even realize it because you want to release the love of God to them? They admire you from a distance, but don't feel like they can re- approach you because they don't feel good enough. Yeah. Oh, but you won't extend your love. You won't even take the time just to smile. Come on. Come on. God bless you with some teeth. Just Hey, yeah. the church is losing its love. Yeah. That's why we have no power. Because we, we see each other on Sunday, but we don't even touch each other during the week. We don't care if you have food or a place to live. We just know that you show up on Sunday. That's not good enough. Because we practice in here to go out there and demonstrate it. If you're not demonstrating in here or practicing in here, you can never demonstrate it out there. So I had decided. I want a pastor to do what I want him to do. And what I was really asking him to do is shut up his bowels of compassion. How dare me? Now, everybody I want to bless and help, he just comes along. Y'all might as well say amen. 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 Pastor, I think we need to do such and such and such and such and such and such and such. Okay, baby. Me, uh uh-uh. They shouldn't be in that condition. That's their fault. We ain't doing nothing. If you do it, I'm going to be mad. I guess he was like, well, be mad. I didn't say I was going to leave. I just said I was going to be mad. And I was angry. But what God was showing me was, what, baby, you ain't been perfected in love. Because when you're perfected in love, it doesn't matter who needs. If you have the ability to meet the need, then God expects you to meet the need unless he tells you not to meet the need. I didn't ask God because I didn't want to know what God was. Don't act like y'all didn't know. I had all, many of us have already resigned when we get up in the morning. This is what I'm going to do when I go to church and I ain't doing nothing else. And you're not getting nothing else. When you understand, when you come in here and you ride the pine, you don't hurt me. When you don't give him his due and his glory, you don't hurt me. Because what y'all got to understand, yeah, it's collective, but really it's individual. If I come with my praise and you come with your praise, baby, we can turn this bad boy out. But when all of us decide, ooh, they ain't praising, so I ain't going to say that either. I will praise and step on their feet and root. Honey, they'll they'll decide I ain't sitting by her no more. But see, all of us are hungry for something that God died for us to have. We're starving for it. We got young ladies, babies, young folks. It's not in a man. It's not in a woman. After you get that, you still need the love of God or he going to walk off and leave your behind. 
He can do all these great things. But what happens when sickness comes? You need love. What happens when financial difficulties come? You need love. If you don't, you begin to bite and devour one another. We have to close ranks when we get in trouble. But if I'm not sure you're going to be there, can I count on you to close ranks? Get close. Don't let nothing in between us. We're going through. We're under attack. But three, a threefold cord is not easily broken. The Bible said two is better than one. I got all of y'all and we can't get together in love. Because of what you think I should be doing? Well, I learned this week from a preacher that it ain't about your understanding or your opinion. It's not about my understanding or my opinion. The Bible says wisdom is a principal thing. Get wisdom and all you're getting, get in under. Many of us, the problem is we are going around establishing our own righteousness. And when you establish your own righteousness, God cannot deal with your righteousness. He can only deal with his righteousness. So you got to read the book. See, because many of us are going off of what we heard in Sunday school, what we heard in Bible study. But how many of y'all know we need some private time? I have read scriptures that I did not understand. But as I prayed and I meditated, I could show up somewhere and they talking about that very scripture. Sometimes he just wants you to resonate right there. God wants to demonstrate his love, but he has to be a priority. Y'all don't make God a priority. He has to be a priority. And everybody want to make it spooky. It ain't spooky. It's not even difficult. It's just so simple. Y'all add all the other stuff. God is a loving God, and he just wants to love some loving folks. That's it. It's that simple. Put my scripture back up here. I got good time. It's only 12, 15. Rejoices not, in, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things. There are some people that are going to come. Don't take my scripture down. There are some people that are going to come into our lives. It's going to take a little longer. You're going to have to watch them make bolos, mistakes over mistakes. And then you're going to be thinking, why all the time when they need something, they come to me? Because you got it. That's why they come. Because they know that you operate in the love of God. And if I need it, you're not going to let me go hungry. But you feel like if I could get the message to you, you could feed yourself. But it takes a while. All of us operate at different. We move at different paces. So you can't, you can't count me out because I'm not where you are. You can't give up on me because you see me in the same place all the time. If that was the case, none of us would be here. We love to think that we're good. Mm -mm. These people right here were gifted people. In this text, they were very spiritually gifted. I mean, miracles, faith, tongues, prophecy, interpretation. They had it going on. The problem was they got in their self. And when they got in their self, they start comparing gifts. My gift better than your gift. Uh Uh-uh, my gift better than your gift. That's basically what they start doing. And Paul was like, whoa, whoa. It's good to have all that stuff, but... If you're operating in all these things and there's no love, it don't matter. Yeah. And when there's, there is love, there is no competition. Yeah. When there is love, there is collaboration. Yeah. So when we have served Saturday, we'll say, I already did that. Because yeah. you wasn't too effective because we still got green seats. Mm-hmm. So that means we need to do it some more. Yeah. God help me. Yeah. This is a collaborative event. We do this as a, we don't compete. No, no. Because I talked to pastor and I told pastor, I said, uh, 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 those eggs and that cake, they need to be in there. That sugar, it got to be in there. That flour, you ever finished baking a cake, anybody that cooking and realize, man, I left out the vanilla. Yeah. I start trying to scrape it out the pan. 
and see if I can save it. If I can't save it, I got to throw that away. I can't feed it to nobody because I already know it's absent. It's something, an absent ingredient that needs to be in there. That's how it is in the body. When you come and you have a gift, you bring your gift. Your gift is not about who's sitting next to you. Your gift you offer to the Lord. Amen. That's what your gift is for. Your gift is to glorify God in the earth. We sitting up, all of us have decided in our mind what we're not going to do. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. You belong to the Lord. But your problem is you need to tell, ask God, God, teach me how to love me. If nobody else loves me, I need to learn how to love myself. I think even David, when he got to going through real bad, he couldn't find nobody to encourage himself. He said, I encourage myself. So sometimes when you need a pat on the back, Aubrey, you just got to take your hand and pat your own back and keep it moving. You cannot see. Sit and let people's decision begin to affect y'all's. Y'all, y'all so dry sometimes. It's just sad. And then y'all want to get on Facebook. I just love the Lord. He been so good. Really, I go to church with you. Y'all might need to get off and just get a prayer life. Because when you get a prayer life and you really been before God, I told y'all about illumination. Don't have nothing to do with the color of your skin. You just have a brightness over you. You know, when people be like, girl, you've been with the Lord. You know, other people can identify. Some of them say, like, girl, what you using for your skin? Nothing, prayer. It's time. Y'all need to go back to the old way. And I ain't talking about looking tired and your head nappy. And uh uh-uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Mm -mm, I ain't talking about that because I ain't going back that way. I'm talking about going back to fasting and praying until you know God for yourself. Some of y'all have not really experienced the presence of God because you're scared. He ain't going to do nothing to you. You're going to be better after you get in the presence of him. You're going to feel better. You're going to look better. You're going to think better. Your mind going to change. The way you see folks is going to change. It's a love thing. And the church, love draws people. When you are, when you have the... Some people, God help me. When I get to them, I know it's going to be work, Brother Larry. I start preparing myself. I'm going to have to make them feel good today. So God, let me feel good before I get to them so I have the strength to make them. It shouldn't be like that. It should be no matter what happens to me on the course of the day because I have a relationship with God. I know everything's going to be all right. And because I know everything is going to be all right, I'm going up here and put a smile on my face. I'm going to greet my brothers and sisters. And whatever they're doing, I'm going to participate. Because God brought me here for a purpose. My scripture's still up there. Come on, let's go down. Charity never faileth. Love never fails. I don't care what a condition a person is in. If you love them with the love of God. Now, I'm not talking about love them because you want them to be your man. Or love them because you want to be a woman. When I'm talking about the love of God, I'm talking about they don't do what you want them to do, but you still love them. They don't act the way you want them to act, but you still love them. They disappoint you, but you don't go off. You still love them. We do not even possess the capacity to have that kind of love absent from a relationship with God. Because that, I be through with, folks. You understand? They better not ask me no more. And then God say, how you going to say that? Who told you that? And you know what he tells me? I'm still putting up with you. See, some of y'all think y'all have arrived and you actually have not. That's what he let me know. Martha, you thought you was really loving people and you was proper in your place. You was not. You, I had to let that come so you will know. I had the nerves to tell Pastor, I don't like them folk. And you know what my reason was for? Check this out. Because they didn't do nothing for me. But look what God has done. What? They never did anything for me. Really? How selfish. How self-centered was that? Everybody that operates in depression, you're self-consumed. Cannot be depressed thinking about how you're going to help somebody else. 
You get depressed when you look at your condition and you start listening to the enemy that tells you it's not going to change. It's sad when I figured out and I started thinking, oh, God, every time I thought about being depressed, it was all about me. This is not all about us. It's all about him. That's what you have to remember when we praise and worship. It's about him. Praise and worship, y'all got to have an extra special relationship. Y'all sometimes probably just need to close y'all eyes. Because I'd be like, my God from Zion. These people say they serve the same God that I serve. They say they love him. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Give me my next scripture. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Attitude. 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 Childish things. You take something from a child, they give you an attitude. You don't let them do what they want to want to do. They, oh, they got to have it, got to have it. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. And now about it, faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Y'all can love the hell out of folks. You can, but it has to first be in you. Because when we are, when, when our patience is short, that's not the love of God. When we're unkind, that's not the love of God. When we're impatient, that's not the love of God. The love of God suffereth long. It is patient and it is kind. And it does not feel like it is doing people a favor when it is in action. Some of y'all act like you're doing people a favor. Do you know, and I I was talking to my daughter-in-law and my um, son last night, and I was telling them, one thing we have to understand about relationships, they were created by God. That's why they're always under attack. I don't care if it's brothers and sisters, parents and children, husbands and wives. He just wants to divide because any good, healthy relationship exemplifies the relationship with Jesus Christ in the body. So what he does is he tries to devour us or tear us apart. So what he does is he makes us independent thinkers. And God never meant for you to be an independent thinker. He meant for you to depend on him about what you think. Y'all missed it. Y'all could have shouted right there. Because if all of us are making it up as we go, it's going to be what? Confusion. But if we're all reading the same book and getting the same instructions and exercise them in the same principles, integrity, and character, then we become one. And when many become one, we become powerful. Oh, my God. Clap your hands. I got another scripture I want to share with y'all. I'm going to let y'all go home. I'm sorry I was a little long today, but I needed to get that out so I could be free. I know some of y'all just so accustomed to being bound. It's okay, but it's not okay in my life. So to stay right with God, I have to get right. Love makes us effective. Love exhibits our character. So whatever's in you is what you're going to produce. You are what you eat. I eat a lot of sugar. It's not good for me. But a lot of y'all eat a lot of negativity. It's not good for you. It affects you because it makes it almost impossible for you to demonstrate the love of God. Because first, to demonstrate the love of God, you got to get over how you feel. How you feel about whatever you're getting ready to do. You understand? And then you have to tap into the greater source, the power of God. I know y'all don't shout no way. You might as well leave with some word. 
Psalm, uh, Romans 12 and 9 said, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. First John 4 and 20 says, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? You're looking at me every day and can't stand me, but you love God. That's not what the Bible say. God gives us endurance. He makes us able to put up with one another until he finishes the work. Because all of us are a work in progress. Amen. It's a love thing. And Tina Turner said, what does love have to do with it? Everything. We're standing all over the room. Yeah, hallelujah.